Yeah, I mean, that's been pretty consistent what we've seen from a lot of the retailers this holiday season. It's what we expected. Um, people have shifted towards online spending, and that makes sense. I know this is a bull part of the, the Reddit thesis, those investors out there, but uh, that's not the because of the, that thesis, that they're expecting Ryan Cohen, all the changes that he's supposed to make, to come in the future. That's not has nothing to do with this fourth quarter. This fourth quarter was basically in line with what they said it was going to be, your earnings hit. Um, you know, they've controlled inventory. A lot of the things they've done, closing stores, controlling inventory, CFO Jim Bell, who's on his way out the door, really had a big role in, play, in impacting all that. So uh, we'll see what will come in 2021. Have you been talking to the company throughout, throughout this? I and mean, they have been, they have not come on CNBC. They have, they have not been addressing the stock surge. They have not done a secondary offering as a lot of people expected. Joseph, what, what are they, are you talking to them? Are they telling you anything? They are very tight-lipped. They've been very tight-lipped about this whole situation. They don't really want to get into what's going on. Um, they are trying to just stick to their strategy and become more uh, consumer-oriented, more digital and really going after the consumer in that way, uh, which is the shift that we're all talking about, you know, becoming a more digital company, less reliant on the physical. And yet the company's not really talked much about what they want to do. They've not talked about accessing the, the capital equity markets to raise some cash. They've not talked about anything they might acquire to accelerate um, their transition and transformation from the current status that they're in. So I know there's a lot of hope out there, but uh, we need to see, you know, really what they're thinking about and how they're planning to make this transition. Anthony, what are you uh, going to be listening out for on the earnings call, if indeed you've got a place on it? Um, I will be listening um, to how they're going to pull a rabbit out of a hat and uh, turn this into a viable company that justifies anything close to this valuation. Unlike Joe, I no longer cover the company, so I don't have to say um, you know, nice things about them. I mean, this is not a good quarter. Comps were up 6.5%. That was against a down 26%. So on a two-year stack basis, comps were down 20%. Earnings were up 5.5% on an adjusted basis with new consoles that just came out. These are not good numbers. They're not good numbers, and they don't justify this valuation. So, like I said, I, I, I will be looking for the magic beans, the pixie dust, whatever you want to call it. We got to get more ex-analysts back on, get, get brutal honesty <laughs> here. Um, up 8% after hours. Anthony, what, what is this stock worth? So when I uh, uh, dropped coverage of the company in January, um, I had a $10 price target, one zero. Um, this stock is not worth anything close to where it is trading. Let's put this in perspective. Right now, uh, GameStop has a larger market cap than five below, Ollie's Bargain Outlet, and Floor and & Decor. I bring those three companies up because those are companies with great concepts that are growing, that are profitable, that have positive comps. And by the way, I'm not real worried about anybody digitally downloading four by six subway tile anytime soon. It's nonsensical, and this went badly. Joseph, quick final what? Yeah, I, I think Anthony's exactly right, quite honestly. You know, I'm, I have an underperformed rating on the company and, and I'm at a $33 price target, which is the bull, most bullish on the street of all the analysts. You know, back in the heyday when they hit prior cycles, maybe you saw the stock get up to $60, $70. Nothing close to where it is today. I think Anthony's absolutely right. It's not trading on fundamentals at all. It's kind of a hope and a prayer at the moment. And uh, that, that there's this magic pixie dust that's going to make things change for the company. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.